There's a little bit of uh, timing with today's feast. The transfiguration is exactly 40 days before the exaltation of the cross. So uh, transfiguration is tied to Jesus' crucifixion. He was preparing his apostles for his suffering and death. He's saying, here's my glory, but we got some bumpy roads ahead. Uh, in the same way, he's preparing us to realize the true dignity that is ours as sons and daughters of God. The saints tell us this, they say, God became man in Jesus Christ so that humans might become God. You go, wait a minute, Father, have you flipped out? It's called divinization. So stay with me, we're gonna talk about this. Uh, what, do, what does divinization mean? Does it mean all of us are God? Let's look at that. St. Thomas Aquinas, so that's a pretty reliable source, says this. He said, God became man so man might participate in divine life. So he might himself become God by participation. So we're not God by nature. By nature, we're humans. But we can participate in God through our baptism. We believe that in heaven, you and I are gonna enjoy what's called the beatific vision. We'll be able to see God face to face. Clearly, that's way beyond our human capacity. That's way beyond our pay grade. Um, I heard a neat image for this, but I think it really says it pretty well. Let's say we're astronauts landing on the moon. Well, we're on the moon. We're gonna need some special suits, special shoes, some oxygen, special uh, uh, equipment uh, in order to survive there on the moon. In much the same way, we're gonna need an elevated human nature. We're gonna need a share in God's own life in order to be fit for heaven, in order to see God face to face. In other words, we're gonna to need to be divinized by Jesus Christ. To say that Christ came to divinize us is kind of the opposite of the message of the world when you think about it. Our world seeks to, I would say, animalize us. Our world says all we are is urges and physical needs, desires, and nothing more. I love, remember the ugly duckling story. All the ducks thought that that duckling was so ugly uh, until the swan said, no, you're not a duckling, you're a beautiful swan. In much the same way, our world, tells, our world tells us, you're just a package of physical urges. But our faith says, Jesus says, no, you're actually a unique creation of God, never to be repeated. Beloved in his sight, and your soul is being divinized even now to be prepared for the life of heaven. The world, thinking of this image, I think it's a fair one. Remember that Old Testament story of the two brothers, Jacob and Esau? Esau was the older one. He was all set to inherit the whole shebang, all the lands, the flocks, the herds, everything. But his younger brother Jacob was quite a bit smarter. So one day Esau was hungry. Jacob had a bowl of soup. Jacob said, okay, here's the bowl of soup if you give me up all your inheritance. Esau goes, okay. He, got, he ate the soup and he lost all of his inheritance. I think that's what the world wants us to do. Just follow all your physical urges, just be on this plane, and so you give up your divine inheritance. Uh, what? Yeah, what? It's a lot. We don't want to give up heaven for anything that only this world has to offer. Um, St. Paul says, we have here on earth no permanent home. We're just passing through. Don't try to make it permanent because it's not going to work. Uh, I love that story I probably told you before of St. Catherine of Siena. She had these dialogues with Jesus and she saw this beautiful soul just radiant with light. And she said to Jesus, that must be one of the greatest saints in heaven. And Jesus said, no, that's just a baptized soul covered up with my glory. That's what all of us look like in the eyes of God. Baptized soul covered with my glory. There's something kind of bittersweet about this feast of the transfiguration. It reminds us that as wonderful as this life is, as wonderful as this world is, it's not permanent. We're never really gonna be entirely at home. Like Paul said, we're passing through. This Wednesday afternoon, 
I did something I haven't done in years. I have all these pictures. So I thought, I'm going to sort through the pictures, see which ones I save, which ones I throw away, and start maybe, I don't know, I haven't got to the scrapbook part yet. We'll see if we get there. So I'm going through all these pictures of family, friends, loved ones, babies being baptized, friends getting married. And all of a sudden, here comes the tears. I started crying and crying. I thought, why? why? Why am I crying right now? One thing that hit me was their tears of gratitude. Life is so beautiful, so wonderful. People are miracles. Life is such a blessing. But at the same time, there are tears of recognition. This isn't going to go on forever. All this beauty is going to pass. There's something more. There's an eternal life of joy. There's a heaven waiting for me and for all of us. Beautiful as this is, it's passing too. At the end of the day, I think this Feast of Transfiguration is a feast of incredible hope. That's our destiny. That glorious body of Jesus, radiant with the light of God, is what you and I are called to also. St. Paul says he's going to change our lowly bodies to be like his own glorified body. And as much as we're in awe at the body, the glorified body of Jesus, that's going to be our destiny as long as we're faithful. Jesus, as you know, is called the Pontifex. That's a Roman word. It means the bridge builder. He's the bridge between God in heaven and sinful humanity here on earth. He came to build that bridge. But as we're faithful, as we walk that bridge from this life to the next life, we notice I'm being changed. And we are. We're being divinized. We're sharing in God's own life. We're being prepared for heaven. 